All right, so I am selecting the, the background behind this wing. I'm using the magic wand. I'm holding down shift. So the problem with magic wand is it will leave lots of little debris. These are pixels that don't quite match the pixels you're clicking. And the way you can clear a lot of that is to feather it, right? To refine and mask. Just to show that to you, instead of doing it all in one step, I'll first just delete and get to the crisp pixels and then unselect. And you can see like all that little debris is there that I don't want, right? Also, I have a little halo. So I'm going to now click on the empty space around. I can add to that with my lasso holding down shift. And now I'm going to refine and mask to feather that in. So I go up to here or select and mask. 5 for the radius, 2.5 for the feather. I have it remember my settings. I say OK. And now it will get rid of all of that debris just by hitting delete once. See, so nice and clean. There might be little bits that were too big. Or sometimes it's just a smudge on your monitor, <laughs> which often happens to me. All right, so I've got a clean cut out of those wings. I actually really like those wings. I've also got a clean cut out of these wings. How can I make them match? I'm going to use adjustments. So you're starting to see a pattern here, doing the same things kind of over and over. So I first play with levels, then I'm going to play with what? That's right. It's great when you guys play along. That's going to get get those yellows out of there. You put a little bit more pink. In the highlights, I can put a little bit of that warmth back in. And then the shadows cool it down again so that those blacks match, right? Now what I want to do is actually warp these wings. And if I'm worried about it, I can always make a duplicate and then Command T or Edit Free Transform and warp what's behind. Because I like the anatomy of the seagull wings, but I want the dynamic qualities of these dark wings. And I'm going to try to blend them a little. And warp can help me do that as long as I understand how the anatomy is lining up. Hit return. All right. I can try flipping them, having one behind the other. It's kind of interesting. But I think this is going to work. Okay, now I'm going to cut out what's called a pin feather from the white wing. So I can blend it in a little bit better. Remember when you zoom in, you can hold down the space bar to move around. And I'm going to try warping the white wings just a little bit to match with Edit Free Transform. And I'm going to try to line up those pin feathers. Now, I could do this where the, the beak is or the nose is overlapping the wing, but I don't want to do that for later posing. It's good to have a cleaner silhouette where they're not attached for character design to make it more flexible later. So let's try that. And now I'm going to blend those internal edges. How do I do that? With an eraser at 100% opacity, soft edged and large, at least 100 pixels. In this case, more like 200. And start taking out that hard edge. Start blending them together. Where they overlap. I 
I get to kind of pick the shape, how they'll relate to each other. The only hard edge I kind of want to keep is the one going in behind the chest, right there. I can get that from either reference. Okay, now I can use a softer opacity, around 50%, and start blending the two together. It's taken now down to like 11%. Just give a little bit more control with each shift in opacity. And this is the hardest blend there is to blend something white into something dark. And there's going to be little things you can't avoid, like that's the chest of the seagull, right? But I'm going to show you how we fix that with a new tool once I get all these pieces together. Okay, so those are the wings. Now I have this backup pair that I can transform and warp to kind of make up for anything, like the transition into the, uh, the bottom there. Can cover that up and then if I warp it I can even use these separately there we go so this is called internal compositing again when you use reference multiple times from a single source okay and then I'll erase some of those things I don't want from there, from that back set of black wings. But yeah, that helps. Oh, I don't want this tip from there. Okay, save my work. Wings are done, I'm gonna lock those. Now just the feet. I wish the feet were gonna be easier, but they are what they are. So, before I cut it out, I'm gonna, it's just one reference, you know, for, for the feet. It's not even in a folder for the legs. So I'm just going to go right to adjustments. I'm gonna start with levels. I'm gonna brighten them up a little bit, maybe deepen the shadows, maybe limit the highlights. Obviously, there's a lot to fix with color. I don't need to take all the color out, but I need to make it look like it's in the same kind of lighting temperature. So mid-tones, highlights. I'm trying to ignore those bright greens. Shadows. It's looking better. Then hue saturation. These are your direct adjustments. Shift it a little bit to the right, and then maybe take the saturation down just a smidge. Okay, now, my biggest problem with this reference is that this foot was moving, so it's a little blurry. But I'm just gonna use my lasso, and I'm just gonna be confident with my tablet, and just cut this out, maybe in sections. And where I cut it out, it's going to be pretty darn clean to begin with. But these are really, really weird feet. And so I do like that. Yep. Yeah. 
And if you have to get some grass in there, I'll, I'll show you how we can use the clone stamp to clean that up. And if you lose your nerve, which I often do, you can always just push out and then delete it out in chunks. You don't have to do it all in one pass. That can be very risky and it's not very rewarding even if you have to redo it several times. Especially when it gets to narrow spaces like this. I find using a tablet very, very helpful. And I try not to zoom in too much or get too obsessive, otherwise it takes way too long. I've got to ignore that grass that's overlapping the foot. Again, it's very hard to find reference of feet without things in the way. So if I had time to improve this, I might find some new feet reference to swap in. But now I'm focused on getting something turned in. We want to get something turned in. In the next 15 minutes or so. And it's not going to be as good as it can ever be. It's just going to be a part of the process. I get to decide, I'm empowered to decide which feathers I keep and which ones I cut off. So I get to draw my own distinctions, my own silhouette. Okay, now I'm reasonably sure that I've cut out the edges. Now I want to get all these greens, so I'm going to use Magic Wand, tur turn off contiguous, select on the greens, hold down Shift, select on the lighter greens, darker greens, and maybe select a little too much. So instead of hitting delete, because I don't want to delete everything from those feet, I'm just going to use my eraser at 100% opacity and then use that selection like a stencil just from the places I want it to be deleted from. All right. Looks like that. Not too bad. All right. Now, internal edges. I get to blend the legs with the, the bottom of the, uh, let's see, what is it, the wings? Yeah, I got to get rid of those wings on the seagull. So I'm going to unlock that. I'm going to use my eraser. 100%, take it out. Now I just get to blend all these references together. So I want to see what the components are. Unlock them. Blend some of these internal edges, starting with the bee, then the owl. First at 100%, then at lower opacities, should I need. I usually skip from about 100 to about 50 to about 20. Now what's happening is the wing is coming through there, right there, so I can erase the wing as it overlaps. All right. So good enough to save at this point. And now...